Hey, good morning, people. It is Wednesday, July 27th, and oh my gosh, I got to get my comments up. We have a lot to do today, a lot. So uh, we might run just a little bit late. I'm trying to get comments. I don't know why that always just takes so long, and that drives me crazy. Note, I have a bit back, different backdrop. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's see. Heidi is like on steroids this morning, so we'll see if she behaves. So, John, I'm not getting comments yet. Will somebody put up a comment, please? Because I want to make sure I can see those before we get going. Yeah. Okay, here comes John. John? I did. I I did. Come over here. You shaved. Did you shave? I did. <laughs> See, I always go right there, right? Yeah. So I go there. Oh. There they are. So, South Africa. Okay, okay. I got to stay focused because we have so much to do today. Um, I went to wrap up our show and tell. And I, it could take a whole thing again, but I want to I want to get through them and kind of put a bow on the end of this. For now, we are going to do this again because it's so much fun to see what people are making all over the world. But what else is fun is when you go on Facebook and you find this on Frida Anderson's site. <laughs> she said, I, "I want." It's actually a movie. I wonder if I could do that with binding. I don't know why not. There's your tip of the day from Frida Anderson. <laughs> if you're not familiar with uh, Frida's work, it is fabulous. She is a partner in crime with Laura Wazalowski, and Frida's show is 0705. Uh, we, she did a cat, which is just about as cute as can be. So, Okay, how can I save these to watch on a bigger screen? Linda, what you're going to do is these don't go anywhere. They reside forever at thequiltshow.com, and you just go um, find find me in the live section. Okay, I I don't. John could tell me where you find where you find me, but I'm there. I don't know. I just I'm a talent, the talent that knows hardly anything. Okay, let's get going with some quilts. You people have been busy. And as I said on Monday, here he comes. How do you how do you find this on the site? Here goes. Okay, so yeah, you can go watch this again and on again. On the site, it's on the learn section. But okay. if you want to watch it on your big TV, go to YouTube, go to our channel. And then uh, we have an entire live section for, for Alex on her different projects. Really? So you can just go to YouTube and see it. There you go. Um, Jane, right now I don't want to receive any more quilts for show and tell because I'm going, I will lose them. It's not that I don't want to see them. I will lose them. Okay. And we'll do this again in a month or something. But this was just way more popular than I thought it would be, which thrills me no end. So again, we'll talk about squaring up your quilt at the end. I've got a little 10 minute video. We've got lots to go through. All right. So um, first up, we have Linda. Wait, I'm on the right page here. Let me get on the right page. This is how I keep track. There we go, Linda Davis, yay. So this, she took our block of the month that we're doing right now, and um, she, this was hard for her, which yay, I like it when things are hard. Not to be a meanie, but that means you're learning. And this is just the center of our BOM, which is a free pattern for you if you are a um, star member. So thank you for that. And then this is Susan. Now she needs to quilt it yet. And remember Susan, it's gonna show. Um, she used her go cutter to cut out the shape. So if you don't have a go, um, that can be a real lifesaver when it gets down to cutting out funky shapes and stuff like that. And so because you use your go cutter, my guess is that it's fused. Although you could have cut out the print and piece and then finish it around the edge too. Um, I use mine, I use mine when there's circles and drunkard's path and things that have odd shapes. Man, that is my go-to. Thank goodness that they uh, invented that, right? Okay, and then Kelly, I see that you're here. 
Um, look at this. Oh, God, here's your progress. I just love this. Kelly, oh, you are just knocking it out of the freaking ballpark. I think everybody would agree about this. Sherry, I did get the email and I wrote you back. Okay. Um, Becky, Becky, Becky. Oh, Becky. This is um, her self-portrait and it's entitled Portrait of the Artist as a Young Sea Witch. <laughs> If you guys have not done a self-portrait, you are really missing out on a lot of fun. And especially if it's, you know, even with your kids, you know. So um, here is another one by uh, Becky. Let me get it here. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. This um, was a free pattern. And it was a free pattern to a good home. And it was a Don Lynn pattern, to be exact. Um, it's called Out of Africa. It's his pattern. And I did not know this, but Don lost his um, home from a fire a few years ago. Um, and then she was influenced by Ricky's live episode, um, or his live episode where there was music of the spheres combined. The The... The, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I thought I had a quilted picture. I think it's in the wrong place. So maybe we'll be jumping back to that. Okay, so Roberta, I did have this before and I don't know how it got lost in the mix, but um, she started this at festival a few years ago and um, it has tacks, piping, couching, decorative stitches. Um, also, this part is really super cool. The borders are leftovers from a jacket that her sister made. So, you know, one thing in our last round of taping, and I love seeing it, is there is a lot of upcycling that's going on right now. And I think that's absolutely fabulous. Okay, now Teza, I don't even know if, Teresa, cute name, I'm not even sure if you're up right now. Um, because you are in South, South Australia. Now, let me talk about Teresa behind her back. <laughs> she, um, said, she, did, she does a lot with her hands, all right? But she never really fancied herself a quilter until she did this. And so this makes me so happy, Teresa, that, I mean, First of all, if you don't fancy yourself a quilter and you do this, oh my gosh, come on, right? Y you know, this this is not for the faint of heart, although although a ton of these quilts have been made and uh, it was really broken down very easily. So uh, this was our last year block of the month by Wendy Williams and Barbara Black ushered us through the whole thing. But wait on this, there's more. Go to the very top where 12 o'clock could be, and there is her house. And what Teresa said, I love this. It is, quote unquote, my quilt is perfectly imperfect. Don't you love that? That kind of brings me to Katie Fowler, you know? My quilt is perfectly imperfect. Teresa, we will all say you are a quilter. And if you didn't know you were before, it was just hiding underneath your skin, okay? All right, and now we have um, Mariette, her neutral blooms, and um, I, I, I love what she put on the back. All right, just saying. Okay, teacher's pet. <laughs> now, what's so interesting in going from, you know, this muted, muted, quilt that a lot of us did and look at this one look at this other one that she sent along isn't that beautiful just beautiful so i don't know she didn't share mariette if this was a pattern or not but man you got some chops lady mm -hmm. okay and then this is Penny Coles. She's from Northern Ireland. I mean, you just think about it, you guys. This morning I've seen South Africa. We've seen Australia, Northern Ireland. I love thequiltshow.com because of what it 
it bring how it connects us worldwide as quilters. Just beautiful. Okay, then oh, 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 she did these in oak shots. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about oak shots today. You bet your hide I am. Um, yeah, beautiful. Okay, and then this is Big Ben that she put in. Um, but I want to share this next quilt. You know, on uh, Monday when I said a lot of the quilts have stories? Yeah, well, this is one, all right? She um, made this from a Jenny Byer pattern, I believe. Or Jen, yeah, let me see. Yeah, it says Jenny Byer, so it must be her pattern. I prepared these a while back. Um, and this is her COVID quilt. It reminds her of how the whole world has been affected. The whole world. And then the outside, the der terrible death toll. So I will say this, Penny, I hope that you have put a great label on the back of that because this is the kind of quilt that people, uh, historians will be like going, okay now, okay, um, okay, right, so sad. Okay, Robin, Robin, look at this. Robin made this quilt after being in a Sue Nichols class. And we had did a show on this, just so you know. We did a show. Hold on. It is show number... Oh, where are you? I wrote it down here somewhere. Oh, it's, here it is. Um, 1201. If you look at those feathers in the middle and take it and put a cross in it, okay, from top to bottom and then uh, left to right, and go up to the upper right hand quadrant, that's her initials, R, Robin. And that's what this show is about. It's how to take, well, not entirely that, but that was one of the segments, how to take your initial and then make feathers out of it. So I know um, when she taped that show, she did one of our block of the months too. Um, it knocked my socks off as well as Ricky's. And so that is, it was again, um, Sue Nichols show 1201. Beautiful Robin, absolutely beautiful. And then this is, okay, now I'm lost. Where'd Robin go? Uh-oh. Well, this says Robin, but I know it's not Robin. It's a nut, it's a, I think it's Becky's. Let me go up here. Oh. This is where I get mad at me. Maybe it might be. It might be Becky's. It might be Becky's. Um, but it was, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. But anyways, look at it. It's our 2000, was it 17 BOM that Sue Garman did? It's beautiful. And it, it look, you got yourself a nice little blue ribbon. If you're here, raise your hand. Um, then here is Becky's. And this I thought was really interesting. Okay. Okay, um, this is the um, uh, in the uh, in the northern coast of Oahu. Um, it's where the fe <laughs> it's for. This is Becky Shavers. It's for. It's where um, the famous scene of Bert Bert Lancaster and Deborah Kerr from Here to Eternity was shot. You know where they were making out on the beach. <laughs> it was like almost scandalous at the time. That's this quilt. Um, and I thought it was interesting to put in here that she included, I'm going to screw up this word, but it's Sukinko Inc. Sukinko? Su to T S U K I N E K O Inko's Inks. And that's how you have the shading on there, on that uh, formation out there. Absolutely beautiful. How funny. From here to eternity. <laughs> All right. Then we go to Kathy. I'm back on track now. 
Probably the cat was running around or something. I'll, I'll use her as an excuse. Okay, so Kathy made this adorable quilt for her granddaughter, and it's for sleepovers. That is so adorable. And then she made, look at the bag that goes with it, that it tucks in there along with pockets and stuff that you can like put your toothbrush and, and you know, all the girly stuff you might need. I'm going to tell you, um, she loves it and we love it. What a terrific gift. And, you know, especially when they're getting to the age of sleepovers where maybe it's a little scary, but if you have something with you from grandma or mom, you've got that just little bit of, you know, reassurance. Okay, then this is Irene's. She's finally finished it, and I believe I have a close-up. Uh, the, the image is not as sharp as I would like, but look what she did in the ovals. You know, this was our embroidery class on silk, and look at those baskets of flowers and all that. And then she wanted me to point out, which I agree with, is how she quilted what we're going to call ghost circles around it to help make it stand out a little bit. So you finished, Irene. Uh, I think you mentioned you're a much better writer now <laughs> than when you started. That would be me too, okay? And then, um, okay, so remember Mickey who made the three quilts out of her friend's husband's ties who was deceased and I showed those maybe two or three weeks ago well then her friend came and requested a fourth quilt and these were from his um, shirts and she was very scared to cut into it but I would say um, the part that's really and I can't make it bigger it too was a smaller picture but get this you guys the person that she gives it gave it to is a Catholic, and again, it's her deceased husband's shirts. And so she actually, the friend, took it to the priest, and the priest blessed it, in, in blessed it, and said a beautiful, beautiful prayer surrounding it. Uh, I thought I thought that was just lovely. That is something I have not. Um, experienced and he even sprinkled it with holy water and so for mickey fisher this was just um talk about blessings that abound i mean yeah i've never seen that in my life so what an extraordinary experience right the things that bind us together and hold us together right okay so judith thank you for getting me um a better picture uh, this was a guild challenge, and the challenge was three embellishments on a collage quilt. Okay, so um, the name of it is Always a Rainbow Hanging Over Your Head. So let's take a look at it. Uh, look at the, the pearls around her neck, all right, that are, I'm pretty sure they're loose, and they're like in the wind. Um, and it's, they're blowing in the wind as she's walking to the garden for safety. Um, the face is painted. Um, crystals line the bodice of the dress. I see that now, like on the back there, at the very top and in the sleeves. And um, the, some of the butterflies are dimensional. Um, I think you nailed it, Judith. I think you nailed it. What a fun challenge, too. Talk about stepping out of your box, okay? Uh, we are going to go a little long today, guys. Okay, let's see what Robin has. Oh, that's who it was. Okay, thank you. Now we're back to Robin. I don't know how that got there. Okay, this was the Sue Garman one. Wash your reds. It took her three washings to get out the running, and it shrunk five inches. So pre-wash your reds. I'll be talking about that. Mm -hmm. And then this is an editus pattern. Yeah, I think it's called Palm Springs. So cute, Robin. So cute. Okay, this is a little interesting. This is Kristen's. The pattern is Daisy Dance, okay? And it's by Kathy Munkelwitz. Munkelwitz? It was started in uh, 2012, and um, her grandma started it in the 40s. 
So she actually used, and look, she's still quilting it. She's quilting it by hand. You can, I think by hand. I don't know if it's by hand, but you can see the safety pins are still in there. A lot of the fabrics that she used to complete it came from this quilt that she has done. So Kristen, I, I hope I didn't screw up your, um, your story, but I, that's, that's what I, that's the story and we're sticking to it, Kristen. Okay. And then here's Becky's. Okay. This was the Don Lynn one. And, um, let me show you, look at the quilting on it is, is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That was influenced by Ricky. Look at the back. This is flipping hilarious. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. <laughs> Who says quilters don't have a sense of humor? All right. Um, last time we looked at us, um, Kathy's a Quilts of Valor quilt, and this is a panel that's also for Quilts of Valor. The side left-hand piece is foundation paper piece, but the reason I'm bringing this up is my friend Cindy McChesney has a new book out that is on working with panels, and so I believe we have a show on that too. It's a beautiful book. If you want some great ideas for panels, you might want to check out her book. All right. And then this is Margaret's. Oh, okay. Margaret sent this. Um, remember how we talked about the cherry wood challenge? Well, this was Van Gogh's and this is a Barbara's, okay, piece. I'm telling you those cherry wood people are something else. Maybe I need to interview them, right? And then look at this. Okay, big prize. And this is from Japan. I'm going to say her name is Mayuki um, Humphreys. Just absolutely gorgeous. I'm telling, and you guys, again, these things are only this big, okay? And then Rondi. Can't go anywhere without Rondi. Uh, <laughs> your daughter, Melissa bought her this tulip pink bundle <laughs> for like her birthday and said, happy birthday, mom. I want you to make a quilt for me. <laughs> she said your daughter's not brilliant. And I'm telling you, Ronnie, these are not your colors, girlfriend. Here's Ronnie's colors right here, red, white, and blue. So that's how she finished up her Sequoia garden. All right. Before I talk about what's going on behind me, let's get to squaring up a quilt. And I'm sorry it's going to go about 10 minutes long, but I don't think anybody really cares. Um, here we go. Squaring up a quilt is taking a quilt before it's bound, when you just have it layered and quilted, and cutting it to the exact size you want so that the quilt is square. Many times in quilt making, it, they're not because you've got fabric that shifts, you've got quarter inch seams that get wonky, you get ironing issues. And so one way to get that quilt square is to make it true before you bind it. Now, are all quilts, can you do all quilts squaring up? No. So for example, this is a quilt of mine that has points that go to the edge right here. You can't just go square this up because you will chop off those points. Don't do that. So in the case of this, if the quilt ends up a little funky, you bind it, you wash it, and then you um, block it. That's a whole nother subject matter. For squaring up a quilt, you might want to consider this because there are no defined edges on it. So I can make it exactly the size I want it. But you will do this before you bind it. When you have the three layers that are raw, you're going to cut it to the exact finished size you want. You're going to want to use rulers, all right? I am lucky because I have an endless supply of Quilter Select rulers. This is a big one. This is 18 by 18. This is one that is two and a half by 36. I'll be using them both. And then I might use this one. This is eight and a half by 24. And I might use this one. In any event, you're gonna need rulers and the bigger, the better when it comes to squaring up. All right, the other thing is I am gonna use my uh, Quilter Select Selfie Race pen. 
because I'm gonna be making marks on this and if I don't like the mark, I can just use the eraser and get rid of it on the other side. Plus, I don't have to wet it. It will go away by itself in the course of, I don't know, maybe 48 hours, depending on your climate. You can spray it if you're anxious to get going. But let's take a look at what's going on here. This is like a old, old linen, and I believe it has like pulled thread work in here. And I quilted the heck out of it using like a basket motif and feathers and then crosshatch grid, more feathers on the edge. Then what I did was I lifted back this edge and then quilted out straight line. And I gave myself plenty of room here that I can trim wherever I think I want to trim, all right? So the first decision I have to decide is, or make is, um, how far out do I want to go? I'm kind of thinking about an inch out, but oh, we got a problem here. Because it is an antique linen, it's not straight. So to me, what is most important is that the thing ends up square, and if the linen ends up being a little bit skinnier or a little bit less blue room down here than up here, that's okay. It's, it's more important to me to have a square piece than to have this thing on an angle and say an inch out from the edge. I want it square. The first thing I did was in getting ready for this, I did go down the middle with my purple pen and this way with my purple pen. And as I measured, I saw it really is kind of wacky. But that's okay, that's okay. So I'm thinking I'm gonna kind of want it to be about an inch out from the edge, all right? And down here it's gonna be less than an inch and up here it's gonna be less than an inch. But I'm gonna take this ruler, this is a specialty ruler that Quilter Select came out with, and I am going to just kind of get about an inch here, an inch plus more here, but also I wanna make sure that the line is running underneath on this, on the lines of the ruler. So I'm gonna take my pen and I'm going to draw. Now what I'm going to do is keeping this, this line on my line right here, I'm going to scoot it up. Okay, keeping me honest. And I'm going to go, whoops, okay, and I'm gonna draw here. And then I'm gonna come down here, adding that little extra half an inch. You can see this is such an exact science, right? All right, now the really cool thing about this pen is if I wanted, I could, well, see, now I have an issue down here. Well, let's go to the other side. Let's think about that because I have things kind of ending on a mitered corner here. So that looks good, okay. Down here, it didn't. So I'm just not gonna worry about that right now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the line that's gonna go across over here. So I'm gonna take this ruler. I'm gonna use this as my plumb line to make sure this is straight. I could even take another ruler and go like this. Let's see that this is here. Okay, and this is at, if it's about an inch and a half out, right about here is where I'm gonna want it, if it's gonna mirror this side. All right, so I'm gonna go down here, do the same thing. And you know, I took woodworking in college and uh, the expression, wait, that's not right. Measure 10,000 million times cut once is the truth. Yeah, see, because I measured that wrong. Okay, one and a half, one and a half, right there. Okay, so, oh, let me mark the fabric. I love these rulers. I love, I love all the different sizes that we've come out with and, and all of that. All right, so here's this one here. 
Let me get this big guy out of the way. And then this one is here. And I'm making sure these are parallel, right? So I'm going to take this ruler now. You'll be able to see how unsquare this thing, the um, tablecloth is. I can't even imagine the person who made this. Okay, see, so you see how off this is? That's okay, because it's more important to me that this is parallel. So that's 34, and that's 34. Okay, I, that is fine. All right, now I'm gonna turn this this way because my arms just aren't so big and long. Okay, and now we have to do the same thing on the sides. So here we go here. I'm gonna measure that up there. I'm gonna take this little ruler, go like this. Okay. And then I'm okay, this is And the truth of it is, before I actually cut it, I can tell you right now, I would live, I would sit with it. Okay, that's perfect. That's there. And then this is here. And then I take my rotary cutter to it. Again, I'd live with it for a little bit. And I want to show you something else. Here's another linen that I'm going to ask camera John. Can you see this on camera? Yeah, okay. You can see like down here how off it is, right? It goes in, 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 in. And Cindy said that's just, Cindy Needham, my mentor on these, says that's just all part of the game. So I am going to sit with it, I'm going to live with it, and then I'm going to cut. But basically, when you go to square up a quilt, to me, the most important thing is that it's the same from here to here, here to here, and then the same thing on the top and bottom. And that's what you do. Remember, measure a hundred times, cut once. Okay, and I saw on one of my things, my ruler was crooked, and I think towards one of the last measures. But um, again, you know, measure 10,000 times, cut once, and then here it is finished, and the, the, this thing is square. I mean, it is fab fab. Gotta go this way. It is square. So I, I hope that this helps you a little bit. As far as the rulers go, um, we do carry them in the TQS store. This one is two and a half by 36. I, I thought, what in the world would I use this for when we were talking about making it? Love it. And then the other one, is this one and it's 18 by 18 this is temp this is on back order it's on a boat on a crate coming over so i will let you know when we get it so we got that in the store all right so we put that there um what's going on here behind me our next thing that we're going to do is um improv improv piecing class and we are going to be working with oak shot cottons if you would like to uh, be a part of it and you can see that this one is very very um, much more structured than this one all right and note in this this one over here is i think a lot of oak shots and then some cave stuff thrown in and then this i think is oak shots too Nah, no, I think it might be hand dyes with some polka dots in. And then this one is silks. This one uh, was inspired by Claudia File. And this one's a little more wacky than what I would suggest you do the first time. But I'm going to take you through some different improv piecing exercises. And then we're just going to see what we can do. It won't be a big piece, but it is fun. And uh, I actually gave one up for 
food for Ukraine with Pokey Bolton. So let me see if I have some other pictures here. Oh, that's Rondi. That's improv. No. This was the very first improv quilt I've ever did. And it also has Dale's um, six minutes pieced circle in it too, which I'm going to get to that in a moment. Um, there's one. Uh, here's the one that's on my wall. I can't remember what I put up. Here's my dad's quilt. Oh, this one's out of silk. This one is, this one's really easy right here. All right. And then here is um, the one that I gave up for Pokey Boltons for Food for Ukraine. So what I'm going to be taking you through different exercises. Now, what we have in the store is this. We hand curated oak shots, oak shot cottons for you. They are from England. They are absolutely gorgeous. And if you don't know what an oak shot is, the warp, the warp and the weft are two different colors, so many times it kind of gets a shine there. To me, it's not silk, but it has a little more dimension than, say, your just solid cotton fabrics. So we curated this bundle. This stuff is not cheap, okay? These bundles are just under 100 bucks. Um, the, this, is, this is this one which kind of goes more with the pink one behind. And um, what we're gonna do is, right now, there's an email going out to star members. And star members, you're gonna get first crack at this, all right? Then it will go to the general public on Friday. We, we try and give you benefits way above and beyond, um, you know, just, just, just watching the shows. So if you're interested in playing along, Fine. If you're interested in getting just these oak shots for whatever, um, now these are special bundles we put together. Pre-washing, and then this goes to um, Cindy. All right. I I yesterday I went and I got mine to play with. All right, at the store. Getting out of the car, I spilled Starbucks on it, so I had to wash it. Well, let me show you what happened. This is a color catcher. I did not put in these three colors. I put in these dark colors, and this is what came out, as well as a lot of scraggles, too. Oh, my cat's going to love that. So if I would strongly recommend that you, at a minimum, wash these darker ones. Um, in the blue one, you that purple is very suspect to me. I would probably pull out the blues and the purple and wash. And I would also put some Synthrapol in. And then that will kind of get whatever needs to happen to happen. And I will say, Cindy, for this baby that you're giving the quilt to, bind it up and pre-wash it with Synthrapol and color catchers. Don't send it off to the mom and have her have some big fat surprise because even if it runs like crazy, it is fixable, but a, a novice would not know that, okay? Um, the other thing, this, this is, okay, this is cool. Talk about star members. We, we're come, we're going to start a program called Transform Your Quilting, and it doesn't cost anything if you're a star member. To become a star member is just, you know, 49 bucks a year, and you have access to everything, and twice a week, we're going to be giving you little sniglets of things in all the shows that have knocked our socks off. And starting with Dale's six-minute piece circle. <laughs> that, that is just the best. So our people, our, our people are all quilters, and we're picking out things that are like aha moments that we have done since 2007. I mean, there's so much there. It can be overwhelming. I know that. All right. So um, the improv's going to be fun. It, it, you're going to have to put your seatbelt on. And when I teach you new maneuvers, I would commission you not to use this. I would practice on other fabric because this stuff is from England. It is hand woven. I mean, this is this is a treasure. This is a this is this this needs to be blessed. I mean, this is just a treasure. Okay, John came in here, the man. Uh, if you're only washing half of your 
your stuff, is there shrinkage problems? Oh, if you only wash half your stuff, is there shrinkage problems? You know what? Wash it all, but just don't put the yellows in with the red. Don't, don't, don't put the yellows in with the red. The yellows I, I um, soaked in the sink, and I didn't get my Starbucks out. So I'm probably, look at that. What a moron I am. <laughs> I was trying to juggle too much. Trip. Oh, oh there goes my espresso. <laughs> so, um, pers let's see. Oh, you watch Persuasion, the movie. Yeah, so good. Okay, um, so here we go. Here's the situation. John's real birthday is this Sunday. We were going to go to Yogi Bear in Lodi camping with um, Adair and her family on Robin and Andy, and they both have rigs, and we were going to camp in a log cabin, which those who know me wanted to see pictures. John and I are the only ones that don't have COVID. So that has abruptly changed, but I had prepared to take off Friday and Monday, and I'm still going to take those two off so that John and I have the freedom to go do something that we want to do. Um, Dee will be here Saturday. She has a new project for you. And when I come back next Wednesday, I don't know what I'm going to do, but we have a little bit of time in between um, starting the improv class, which I believe is the beginning of Sep August or September, beginning of September, because we're taping in August. So I'm going to do a thing on hand quilting in between. I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to roll. Okay. Uh, but you know, got to be flexible with me. I'm the producer. I'm the talent. I'm the cameraman and I do everything kind of half baked. So, um, I can't believe you drink espresso and sleep 12 hours. <laughs> you know what, Carol, with that at dinner, I can't eat chocolate. Everyone's, oh, let's have chocolate for dessert. Heck no, this is my morning, this is my morning stuff to go. <laughs> so, all right, my friends, my dear, dear friends, thank you for everything that you bring to the plate. I so appreciate you. John appreciates you. Ricky, Justin, TQS, our whole crew appreciates you and appreciates you supporting what we're bringing you today to keep you up current and informed as a quilter. So, Went a little long, told you it would, but good stuff. So there we go. And John's still plowing through those cards. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs>